Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm a junior in Omaha Central, and my poem is called The Day is March 13th. My aunt turns on the radio. I am lying in the cold sheets of the hotel bedroom, listening to the voices of early morning NPR. My body heavy and my head light from a lack of sleep. Bits and pieces of radio dialogues from the car ride here floating around in my head, ecstatic. We check out of the hotel and step into the void of 5 a.m. rural Nebraska. The sun's light is just high enough to grab the horizon and bleed into it. Clouds dim over the sky, the horizon peeking out from the edge, a streak of red in the middle of shadows and silhouettes. Probably where demons go and smoke cigarettes after the end of a long night, before they descend down below, raking their claws on the clouds as they go. We drive past corn mills and concrete bridges, cloaked in shadows and faint orange lights. The one gas station we stop at seeming to be the only source of life. An empty middle ground seemingly devoid of earth and space. The car radio is silent. It's all tires running on empty roads and the swish of bare trees and cornfields. My gaze keeps returning to the red streak that separates barren land and sky so it doesn't all bleed together into one big shadow. I watch as more light slowly starts to seep into the cigarette smoke clouded at the horizon. As we pass over a bridge running across a creek, the faintest shade of blue tinting the road ahead. And the car stops. The world goes silent as my aunt rolls down the windows. The morning chill hits my skin. Demons stop smoking. A faint chatter is carried over on the wind, slowly growing. As we drive to the other side of the bridge, the trees part, and we see the river running into the edge of the world. The smoke is gone and blue clouds replace it. I begin to see the gentle bumps and folds in the sky as I stand at the river bank. The streak of red heals into a mellow pink, gently touching the river below. We stand there and watch as the chiming of cranes grow louder, pushing the bleeding claws down further and bringing up the sun, letting it sink into the clouds and the river and the tops of bare trees, the warm light brushing the undersides of the cranes as they fly above, fly to the river of pink and orange that lies across the horizon and settle into the waters of reflected light below. A symphony of cranes directed by the breeze backed with the waters gently lapping at the docks behind us. The world is painted in shades of gold and blue as we turn our backs. I sit with my head pressed against the car window to get one last glance of the river. My aunt turns on the radio, static voices buzzing through, their statements saying nothing but saying everything, reminding me that this might be the last time I get to go out for a while.